What runner doesn't love new running shoes? I mean, seriously, you go to a running store, you buy them online, and nothing is more exciting than going for your first run in them, feeling like you just found the perfect pair. Maybe you're getting a new pair because you're wondering if it will help prevent your injuries, or you're in pain and you want it to help treat your injuries so you can get out of pain and run pain-free. Today we're gonna go over if your running shoe actually helps you prevent injuries and if it's worth getting a new shoe if you already are injured and you're already running in pain. I'm Dr. Lisa and I don't know about you, but I personally love running shoes. I feel like I just love that first run in them, wondering how they feel and being able to compare them to my other pairs. It's always so fun and exciting. Right now, there's a ton of options online or if you go into a running store, you just see a huge display of different pairs, different colors, different styles, a heel drop or a minimal shoe. There's just so many options right now. So let's go through which one it would be best for you. The first thing I look for in a shoe is the weight of the shoe. I don't know about you, but I do not want a heavy running shoe. I mean, it can feel like you're literally running with a brick on your foot, right? So I have the Hoka Bondi here. This is the Hoka Bondi 8s, I believe. And you can tell that they have a pretty big arch, a lot of support here. At least it looks like a lot of support. And they actually feel pretty heavy. And I just go off how the running shoe feels. I don't actually look up the weight online. I like to just go off how everything's feeling. If I compare this shoe to a Saucony shoe, this Saucony shoe feels so light. Like it honestly feels like nothing compared to this Hoka Bondi. So the first thing I always look at is how heavy is the shoe? Because if it's heavy, I already know I'm not gonna like it. The next thing I always look at is the heel drop. And that just means that you're comparing the rear foot to the forefoot. So let's take the Brooks Adrenaline shoe for example. This is a 12 millimeter heel drop, which means the heel is higher than your toes by 12 millimeters. So ideally, I like to stick with my shoes around a similar heel drop, just so one isn't too extreme and my body has to adapt to it. So I always like to go with a heel drop that's around four to eight millimeters because that's what works with my body. If you're used to a 12 millimeter, like a Brook shoe, then you should probably stick between an eight and a 12. I wouldn't just all of a sudden drop to a zero millimeter shoe like an ultra because that's going to be a big jump, a big adjustment. Your calves are going to be very tight and tired. So I would make sure if you do that or if you're trying to slowly decrease the amount of heel drop that you're running in, make sure you do it gradually. So if you're used to a 12 millimeter, maybe you try an eight millimeter. And then in a couple months, maybe you try a four millimeter or you walk in a four millimeter like a Hoka shoe. That's gonna help your body just be able to slowly adapt to the heel drop versus it being shocked. And that can really increase your risk for injury if you just jump from 12 millimeter to zero drop. I don't recommend doing that. So the three questions I always ask myself if I'm trying on a shoe or if I'm using a shoe is are they comfortable? It's just a yes, no answer right off the bat. Are they comfortable to you? The next question I ask is, are they lightweight? And we already went over that. You want your shoe to be pretty lightweight. You don't want it to feel clunky. That's gonna really mess with your running form and mess with your rhythm. The third question I like to ask myself is, are they supportive? Can you just bend the shoe in half or do they actually have some sort of arch support, some sort of support? These Saucony Tempest are three checks. I am obsessed with Saucony recently. I feel like they're just, I don't know, they're just the perfect shoe for me. So they check off comfort, they check off that they're lightweight. I mean, these Saucony Tempest are so lightweight and they check off that they're supportive. Therefore, I'm gonna give them a go and I'm gonna try the shoe. It's okay if you don't love the shoe when you're walking out of the running store. I know for me, Hoka shoes have to be broken in for at least three weeks before I can somewhat like them. And I don't actually love the Hoka Bondi because I have very flat feet. I prefer the Cliftons, but I know for me, it's just, it's okay if you don't love the shoe when you're walking out of that running store or if you, if you run in it and the first time you just don't love it, give it some time. Make sure you give it some time, break it in, and then you can decide. 
That's why I love running warehouse because you can purchase a shoe and it's shipped to you. It's at your front door. You can try that shoe out for 90 days. They even send you a return label with it. So if you don't like it within that 90 days, you can just ship it back. It's no big deal. No questions asked and you get your money back. That's why I love running warehouse. A lot of other running companies maybe have 30 days. So I always love the 90 day because then you can give yourself some time to see if you like the shoe or if you want to return it. So if you're injured and you're looking to see if another running shoe is going to help decrease that injury, the first thing I would want to try, maybe not a shoe that's the same brand, I would maybe try a different heel drop. And that's where you might want to go into a local running store and get fitted because then you can try those different heel drops. You're going to know right away that it feels a little different. But that's the one thing I would look at if you're injured and you're trying to get rid of your pain or decrease your pain, try a different heel drop out. That's gonna change a little bit of the biomechanics when you run. Again, I wouldn't go too extreme where you're at a 12 millimeter heel drop and all of a sudden you're at zero drop. I would maybe gradually try a different heel drop like an eight or a four, but that's the one thing I would try if you're injured right now. A study by Ralph et al concluded that there's no reduction in running injuries when you're using different shoes. And I know that's not what you wanted to hear because that would be so much easier if running shoes actually help decrease our risk for injury. But I think that just shows that it's more important to look at what's happening inside the shoe. What's happening at your big toe and your foot and your ankle and your knees and your hip and your low back versus thinking the answer is finding a different running shoe. Another thing you wanna look at in a shoe, and this is important if you have like plantar fasciitis or a bunion, is the size of your toe box. So I know with a lot of running shoes and even non-running shoes, the toe box is usually very narrow and that can cause your toes to kind of cram into that toe box with not a lot of room to spread out. Specifically, if you have that bunion where you need extra room or you have plantar fasciitis. So let me show you a shoe I recommend for those two. This is the Ultra Paradigm. So you can see here, the toe box is very wide. It's normally running shoes will have like a diamond shape. This is more of a wider toe box. Let's compare it to the Brooks Adrenaline just so you can see how this has more of a tip around the toe box and the Ultras a lot wider. So now you can spread your toes out more. So I definitely recommend the Ultras if you have plantar fasciitis or bunions. Now I wanna show you what's in my running shoe rotation. I do recommend that you rotate between two to three shoes. It can be two to three different brands or two to three styles of shoes, but I do recommend that you rotate through a couple pairs of shoes, especially if you're running higher mileage or you're training for a race. Let's go. Welcome to my closet. As you can see, I have a lot of running shoes. So the running shoe that I'm loving for my easy runs or my recovery runs is the New Balance Fresh Foam. I'll link them below, but I basically love that they're lightweight, they're comfortable. I wouldn't necessarily use them for speed or longer runs or even hill workouts, but I do love these for my recovery runs and even just walking around. For my speed workouts, I already said it, but I love the Saucony Tempest. I feel like these are just the best shoe. Saucony is just really stepping up their game. These are the Saucony Tempest. I'll link these below as well, but these are my race shoe right now. I love that they're comfortable. They're also my speed shoe right now. So if you're looking for a new shoe, you should check these out. If I'm on the trails and I'm not on the trails as much as I'd like, just because I don't live near trails, but I'm going to use Whoop, I'm gonna use the New Balance. These are just like the Fresh Foam. You can see they have the Vibram on the bottom. I love these. I feel like these are just so comfortable. The one thing I'm a little skeptical of is how high they are off the ground because as you know with trails, especially with roots, you can easily twist your ankle. So you just have to be careful with those shoes. The shoe I'm using for my long runs is the Hoka Clifton's. I didn't love these at first. They took me a very long time to break in, but I'm loving the new Hoka Clifton 9s. I feel like they're very sleek. They're very comfortable. They're way more lightweight compared to the Bondies, which I love, but these are always just a solid shoe. So in conclusion, you have to pick a running shoe that's best for you. Don't necessarily go off a running shoe just because I like the brand or it works for me because it doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. That's why there's so many different options right now. So many different styles, different heel drops. So I do recommend if you're wondering what shoe you wanna go with next, go to a local running store, get fitted, try them on so you can feel for yourself. And I do recommend you try on a variety of shoes. Like 
five to 10 pairs of shoes, just so you can feel confident that you pick the best shoe that's comfortable, lightweight, and supportive for you. If you're currently dealing with plantar fasciitis, I know you're gonna love this video. It goes through a couple different exercises that I recommend for plantar fasciitis. Make sure you check it out here, and I'll see you next time.